Dustin. This Sunday, brand new sermon series, Radical Love. Um, I think it's safe to say that all of us are pretty excited about it, or at least those of us that's heard about it. Maybe this is the first time. I'm going to think after this conversation, they're going to be excited either way. Yeah. Um, I think we're excited because in society and humanity, we, we see that there's a problem. Sure. It's, it's evident everywhere we go, there's hostility, aggression. It seems like everyone disagrees about everything. Yeah. Kind of like you said in your video yeah. from earlier this week. Um, so we all see there, there's a place for the sermon series, but there's also some questions in the air what the sermon series is all about. What, sure. What's the agenda? What's the goal? You know. Um, so I thought this would be a good time for us just to sit down and talk about that. Right. So Radical Love sermon series, what's the 30,000 foot view? What's the, the aim and the hope for the sermon series in our church? 30,000 foot view. Man, that's a, I feel like that's a loaded question because it's going to get real high and real low and real high and real low. But um, man, I... I think this is kind of a, 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 a journey into what God has been really kind of speaking to me in. Like you and I have had these conversations just around kind of spiritual disciplines and kind of the spiritual discipline audit and asking mm-hmm. God, you know, God, how do we do this? Like, what does this look like? It's a question I've been asking a lot. God, you call us to, to walk in faith. What does that specifically look like? Right. And so we know, like, like love, man, that's what we've been called to do. Like you look at scripture and that's what, that's what Christ calls us to do. You will love one another, love one another. Like I loved, right? So like, he's our model for that. So, so we know that that's what, what Christ has called us to. But my question is, is like, man, so what does that look like in a world that's polarized Yeah. in a world where we've got so many different things that come against our own thoughts, our own agendas, our own mindsets, our own spiritual beliefs, our own religious beliefs, whatever that may be. Mm. Like, we've got all of that, and, but, but what does it mean to love the way Christ has called us to love? You yeah. know, we were, we were talking about this earlier, right? like this idea of radical, like we call it radical because we need something to separate ourselves from normal. Mm. Like, when I think about radical and I think what Jesus called us to, like everything he called us to is radical. Like, that's normal to just do what he's called us to do, to love the way he's called us to love, um, to be with people that may be outside of our comfort zone, to love people that are unlovable, to, to, to forgive people that somehow f- seem like unforgivable. Mm. Um, he just called us to do that. Yeah. We've had to come in and go, let's be radical. Mm. As if there's another way besides following Jesus. Yeah, simply following Jesus is radically following Jesus. Yeah, like there's right. not really an in-between option. Yeah, there's not, it's not that radical becomes like this advanced version of like, hey, I've I've gotten through yeah, these years. Now I'm gonna move into radical. Like when he called the disciples to follow him, it was that was radical in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Like, drop your stuff, follow me. And for them, that was a no-brainer, right? Like in that culture, that world, like that Jewish culture, man, when a rabbi says, let's go, when a teacher of rapport says, let's go, I mean, it made sense. You dropped mm-hmm. it and you went. And so yeah. for them to do that, they get that because they knew, they knew it was gonna take, it was gonna take being close to Jesus to even understand what it means to walk like he did. Yeah. Like that's that is the whole, the whole premise of this. And so so we are from a cultural standpoint, yeah, we're coming into this and going, let's be radical. Mm. What does radical love look like? How do we, how do we do that? How do we show this world um, what the church is really supposed to be about, right? I heard yeah. a, a quote from a guy the other day. He was talking about, right, like, how do we help an, an, an unbelieving world trust in, a, in an unseen God when we have a church that they can see that doesn't even like them. Jeez, yeah. Like, yeah. so, so because that's how we are today and that mm. is kind of what people see us as, man, it is, the world needs to see it. Yeah. I mean, he tells us that, like, the world is going to know that you're my disciples. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. By how you love. Mm-hmm. So like the world is going to know that our church is a church of God and, and, and is a gospel church by how our church loves yeah. and how the individuals in the church are loving people that are, that are outside of them. Yeah. And so as much as this is a call to radically love, 
I mean, I think this is going to be a call to, man, are we just going to follow Jesus? Yeah. Like, are we just going to radically follow Jesus and just do what he tells us to do, knowing mm. that it is going to be impossible? Yeah. I think that's so good. It, may, it even kind of brings my head into a place of like, when we come in on a Sunday morning for a sermon series like this and we're hearing about this radical love, a lot of us will go, oh, it's time for me to graduate into this. Ooh, yeah. It's t- you know, graduate into the radical love. And it's like, no, there's no such thing as a, an entry level, you know, Jesus following. Yeah. Or Christianity, if you want to use that word. Like, yeah. there's no such thing as an entry level. It's like when you, when you commit to Jesus as being Lord of your life, like I love what we were saying in, in other conversations. It's when you, when you say something like Jesus is Lord of my life, that means that nothing's off the table for him to come in and correct and sure. adjust and recenter. Yeah. And I think like that's a sermon series like this kind of does that for our hearts because we're so prone to do our own thing. That's what God's word tells us. Like we're so right. prone to do Absolutely. our own thing. And I, I love when you're talking about how in, in God's word, where it says you're going to be known by, I'm going to be made known by your love for one another, right. you know? And, and I, I think about how Paul, all even called believers agents of reconciliation. Yeah. Like, like that's a high call we have as believers is like yeah. we are agents of reconciliations for God's glory on his behalf, yep. mirroring his goodness and his love and that radical, like there's a big call and what we do is important. 100%. And so I, I think that's amazing. I Absol- think this sermon is going to be so challenging. So the, the crazy part about that, you talk about ministry of reconciliation, right? Like how do you do that without loving somebody? Yeah. Like, how do you go to somebody without loving somebody? And the crazier question is, is how do you go in the name of Jesus and love somebody that you don't even know? Yeah. Or maybe go to a group of people that maybe you grew up repulsed by. Yeah. Well, I think, I think even the word reconcile, like when you reconcile something, that means something is broken yeah. or something is off or off track, you yeah. know? So like when you, so that recognize, even if there is a problem in, you know, uh, in someone you're communicating or relationing with, mm-hmm. like, okay, the problems, like what you're called to be an agent of reconciliation, the, uh, of, of bringing that back together yeah. and fixing yeah. it. And you do that by walking humbly, you know, be, being gracious, seasoned right. with salt. If yeah. you want to yeah. go like yeah. last week in Absolutely. Colossians, like what he says is like, be gracious and seasoned with with salt in your yeah. words and that's that's how we that's one of the, the facets in which yeah. we are agents of reconciling broken things in this world. absolutely paul paul man he ripped in first corinthians 13 what love looked like mm-hmm. love is patient love is kind love doesn't boast it's like i already failed i already easy. failed on that list right, yeah, right, 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 the first right. yeah, absolutely right like and and that's it and that that is all the more reason why we have to follow close to Jesus, mm. A, because, man, we can't do it. Yeah. We absolutely, our agenda is going to be selfish. Our agenda is going to be, what do I gain? What do I get? That's where we naturally walk. And Jesus is going, man, I want you to think of others better than yourself. Yeah. And, and that's love. Mm-hmm. Like that's, and, that, and that is a radical love. That is a radical shift from what we naturally want and what the world tells you is most important. Yeah. And so I, I think with this, I do, I do think this is a call back to, or it's going to be a challenge for, to, for us to, to step up into what Christ is calling us to mm-hmm. do. Um, and, and maybe it is for some of us, it's going to be a call of repentance yeah. because we have not loved the way that God has called us to love. Yeah. Um, and so I hope that challenges us. I mean, it's challenging me and how I think about things and, and asking God, what does this look yeah. like to walk this out? Yeah, that's also good. Um, and I just, I have another question for you yep. too, just with the series. So um, in the video that we put out and even some of the conversations we've had on Sundays, like kind of, you know, hinting towards it, you, you drop some pretty uh, controversial terms, sure. spicy terms that some yeah. of us might kind of makes us makes us squirm in our seat a little bit. Yeah. Um, are we in this sermon series? Are we going to be tackling those, or like what's what's the angle? Are we, are we taking stances? Like what's yeah. what's the idea there? You know, and, that, and that's the funny thing because I think that's so often what the church feels like they have to. Yeah, do. So we're just we're so hungry for the the taking aside. Yeah, and 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 so we do. We we, we are all. This is crazy. Like we are all coming into this on a spectrum. Mm. 
and, and you've got this, like, this is what I think about this, and this is what I think about this, and I come in with this mindset about, you know, um, Democratic parties, mm. Republican parties. Like, we, we know where we stand on those things, right? Like, you, you take things like um, the LGBTQ movement right now, and, and that does something to us. Like, mm. that triggers things in, in our minds. Um, gun control. Especially yeah. here in Texas, man, you start talking about taking away your guns and all mm. of a sudden that that does something to time. somebody. Border control, um, uh, education, man, yeah. all of these things are things that we naturally are looking at and going, um, where do we stand on that? Where do I stand on that? Yeah. You stand opposite of me. I can't love you. So here's the deal. No, our attempt is not to come in and just and create like this is this, is this, this is this, and this is where we stand and our goal in this is to say we're always going to be around somebody that doesn't think like us mm -hmm. we are always going to be around be. Ab absolutely be. like like we're going to be around we're going to be around people that believe differently than us mm -hmm. so what does it mean to love them radically what does it mean to be kind and gracious and merciful mm -hmm. You know, and somewhere in the midst of this, right, like truth reigns. Yeah. Like there's right and wrong. Yeah. Like God's word is very clear about that um, on multiple facets. Mm -hmm. um, but where we've got to start is not coming in and trying to figure out, man, how do I just tell you you're wrong? I got to come in and begin to go, man, how can I love you yeah. where you are? So that when there comes time for conversation, You've earned a seat at the table. Yeah. How do you earn a seat at the table with somebody if there's no love? Yeah, that's huge, man. I mean, what, what is Paul saying? Like, we could have all of these great words. We could have mm. all of these great gifts. We could have all of these. But if we don't have love, we're yeah. just a, a noisy symbol. Yeah. Like, we're we're just kind of wasted air. Yeah. And and so, so, yeah, while it's going to be easy to come in here and try to figure out where we stand... This is not what this is about. This is about I love that. like how do how do we come in and just go hang out with people like Jesus did? Because he hung out with people like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I named just a minute ago, right? He would hang out with both sides of those parties. Yeah. He'd hang out with the right, he'd hang out with the left, and he'd hang out with those who don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like he would be there and, and his conversation would be the same. Right? He would love. Yeah. And 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 he would walk with them. Yeah. So I no, I don't. I don't think it's going to be that. And so I hope, hope that's not disappointing for people who are looking for. Well, if it is, I think that's kind of the point, though. Sure. Is because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of us that you know watch that first video and are like, ooh, like we're going to come in and like yeah. you know get on our yeah, high yeah, horse yeah, yeah. and like talk about what we we need to be you know cultural revolutionaries and it's like that's not the point of this conversation. And I love that. Like one of the words that you keep talking about, like even in our conversations, is this idea of agenda. Mm -hmm. Like every one of us, we just naturally push some sort of agenda it's, it's just it's it's embedded in our dna we're gonna push what we believe is right or you know the or the best approach and and i think what, what i'm hearing you say is when when, when you're a, a radical follower of jesus that be, his gospel his truth becomes your agenda yes not not trying to take um some cultural culture war thing and make it the 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 end all be all yeah this um, is not taking what you what yeah. your grandma and your grandpa grew up thinking and what they embedded maybe in your parents and what's now embedded in you no it's it's maybe to put that on the table and say god is is that my agenda am yeah. i am i am i pushing the wrong agenda yeah. That comes back to the the idea of, man, is, is everything for you? I mean, all believers should ask this question. Is everything in my life on the table for Jesus to, yeah. to you know, to come and, and remove and pluck out and, and shave off, whatever? That's you a know? tough thing, man. Because we have we have our we have our ground that we stand on, and we have our you know we're, we're, we're we hold fast to this, and it's like no, well, you're holding fast to this thing when in reality your your hands should be here on Christ Jesus, yeah. and 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 that's where your grip is, you know, immovable. And yeah. the other things, let Christ point you in direction. And I love the, you know, talking about sitting down, Jesus with, or Jesus would be sitting down with all these different people in the spectrums. Yeah. Um, and the idea, it comes back kind of what we said in the beginning, this agent of reconciliation. Yeah. Reconciliation starts with a relationship. 100%. Reconciliation starts with a relationship. So if you don't have a relationship, you can't reconcile anything. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why, and, and what is a healthy relationship modeled by? It's a first Corinthian stuff, like patience, kindness, yeah. you know, or humility yeah. or gracious being seasoned with salt yeah. in Colossians yeah. 4. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think that's, I mean, I think that's great clarity in that yeah. to kind of know like, what is the, what's, when it comes to these, you know, hot topics, what's yeah. the goal? So I think that's good. Here's the deal, man, we're, we're going to be challenged by something. Mm-hmm. I believe that, man, anytime you bring the gospel into anything that we're, that we're talking about, like we're going to walk away with some aspect of our lives in question. But here's the cool part. Like you've got this loving savior who goes, I know you can't do this. Right. You're going to mess this up. You're going to mess this up in 15 minutes after you, you hear this preached. Yeah. Just stay close to me. Mm-hmm. Depend on me. Rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't get outside of me, and I'm going to keep moving you back into what it means to love. I'm going to keep drawing you back in to what to what this is all about, and that's what He does, um, because He knows we're going to mess it up. Like we we're not going to do this perfectly. No, but we have got to do this the way Christ has called us to and, and push towards that. And I think it's going to come down for a lot of us. It's just going to come down to breaking some of the habits of how we loved people yeah, or what we think we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And I think if we can just be okay with knowing that Christ has a better way for us, yeah, like and trust that. And that's what following him is. Okay. I'm trusting you Yeah, that where you're taking me is good. It's going to be hard. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Yeah. So yeah. That's awesome, man. That I mean that, that gets me excited to see um what this sermon series is gonna like by the power of the Holy Spirit just stir up in our people and you and I and everyone we hope that this encounters. Yeah. So um okay, man, so we're coming up on this Sunday. Yep. Kicking it off this Sunday, yep. first week of radical love. Um we always use we use the word participation all the time. We're, we yeah. don't want to be a church of filled with spectators, right? So, um, if if that is the case, and we want people to participate in on our Sunday experiences, how can our people, our church, Vantage Point, or whoever else is watching these sermons online, how can they prepare their hearts for this? How every every week as they're coming into this, what what can what can they do to help participate inside of the sermon series and prepare their hearts and you know get ready for that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a great. It's not just you, just you know, planning your sermon, and it better oh, be good. <laughs> I, absolutely, man. Yeah. I would, I would say that this is this is going to be one of those times where we're you know going back to the agenda word. I think we're going to have to be willing to check our agenda at the door. Mm. So maybe like one of those things, check, that, like, like, like check. literally, literally yeah. like as you're walking in Sunday morning. Like maybe as you're, you know, at the, the front doormat, like as you're wiping your feet off, it is your kind of spiritual way of just saying, God, I'm going to take everything that I think and I'm going to leave that out here because I want to be clothed with what you think. Mm. Like I, I want that piece of it, right? Yeah. So I think there's that piece where it's like, hey, check your, check your agenda at the door. Check your attitude at the door. Right? Like it could be one of those things. Like it, it may be that we're going to come in already feeling spicy, Mm -hmm. right? And so now it's a matter of going, okay, man, I need to, I need to put myself in check. How do we, how do we put ourselves in check? I think that's a surrender to the, to the, to the Holy Spirit and just say, man, is there anything in me right now that is not of you and, and lead me in the way that's everlasting? So we have to do that. And that's like, I I don't know that just, we're going to show up and just, we're going to be in a perfect place to hear everything without us doing the work. Yeah. And I think the work is, is going, God speak to me. Yeah. Like if we believe that, like, then we ought to be asking, like, God, what do you want to show me in this series? Mm-hmm. What do you want to show me about me? What do you want to show me about our church? What do you want to show me? God, I trust that you're going to speak. I'm asking. Yeah. And I think that's a great humbled prayer god would you speak over me would you would you challenge me would you move me into a place of where i'm supposed to be so i think prayer is is a huge piece of that um i think men as life groups we need to be praying for one another mm-hmm. like if, if we're not praying for the people in our life groups if we're not praying for the people we already know in our church to get ready for this 
And we said it last week. There's a quote that I used that, man, in a prayerless church is where the enemy can do his most damaging work. Mm-hmm. Because the door's wide open. Yeah. So as we pray, man, we're asking God, hey, this is about you. This is about your agenda. Help us just to see you. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Um, pray for me, right? Mm-hmm. Like, pray for me. Like, that's important. Pray yeah. for me as we as we do this. Um, because I need it. Yeah. I, I need it as, as much as anything. Like, because this is going to challenge me. You, I've told them, I, I talk about it all the time. Like, so often I have to wear these sermons before I get to preach these sermons. Um, and that's great. But it's also hard. And so... Pray for the right words. Pray for the, the, the right context and everything that needs to be about this so that this can be what God wants yeah. it to be. So, and then I think, I mean, just, I think it's just trusting him that he knows right where we are and he has brought us to this place and there's a reason why we are doing radical love right now. Yeah, 100%. I believe that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm excited, very excited. Man, so... We all have a role. We have something to do here right now. And as we come up to this Sunday, be a praying people. Um, yeah, get ready to, to coat check your agenda and your um, your propensity to get aggressive or whatever it may be for you. Like Let's let's all just come into um, a sermon series like this with humble hearts, um, with, with a heart that is cultivated, ready to hear the good word of God. So yeah, I'm excited about it, man. I, I am too. I'm very excited. Radical love. We'll see y'all this Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely.